My response to the uh, to, to those who say that this is this is given too much airtime is is not only that we actually just don't know nearly enough about this to know what percentage of child sexual abuse it constitutes because there just haven't been sufficient sufficient in, in investigation done. Um, and of course, the reasons for that lack of investigation are sort of particularly troubling reasons. It's not just um, lack of resources or, um, you know, difficulty of getting victims to um, uh, to work with police in, in investigations. You know, th those obviously are, those are in general the most significant barriers to um, rape prosecution, which is obviously very low. We're talking like less than 1% of rapists will end up in prison as a consequence of their crimes and so on. So it's not as if um, lack of prosecution is rare in this type of offending. But what is rare and is very marked in this case is the degree of corruption and collusion and deliberate attempts not to look further. You don't tend to see that in sexual offending and you do see that a lot in this case. Um, I think also just the grotesque levels of violence. I mean, the the you're, in feminism, you're not supposed to say that there are kind of worse or better types of sexual violence and clearly that it's idiosyncratic and and people will have completely different responses depending on the relationship with the offender you know it's all true but come on like there's a there's a there's a young woman in your documentary who at least one woman who says that she cannot remember how many men have raped her and how many times she's been raped because it's just she was effectively imprisoned in a flat and was just prostituted out of that flat for weeks months and she basically cannot recall you know that that is a level of of sexual violence that isn't by you know when we talk about like x percent of kids having experienced sexual abuse we're not talking about that and we're not talking about murders and we're not talking about tortures and we're not talking about kids being branded with the initials of their rapists that's something that's come up at least once in these accounts you know i i think that the i think it is appropriate for the public to be particularly distressed by this type of crime um and for it to get disproportionate attention and it hasn't except to the extent that you know there's been discussion about the sort of politics of it and the fact that you know the various responses to the lack of response has been what we've spoken about but there hasn't been nearly as much discussion of the crimes themselves and the fact that they're probably still going and, and the reason i think the overarching reason why as far as i can tell from my analysis that there hasn't been this overarching level of attention not just in the media really but at the government level when Sajid Javid re released under pressure of 120,000 people signing a petition, the review into grooming gangs that the Home Office published in 2018, actually it was authored by people who were ideological enemies of the Conservative Party, who were ideological enemies of those who were concerned about grooming gangs. Indeed, one of the authors has continued a career of saying that the overrepresentation of Muslims or Pakistanis in this conversation is a sort of like it's a racial bias is the reason why we talk about it and tries to demonstrate as I said earlier you know 30% of abusers of GLC GLCSE are white and 28% are Asian therefore whites are overrepresented are whites are more popular in this crime and people will whenever you talk about say some you know, concerned parent from I don't know, South Yorkshire, there's a tweet about this saying, well, you know, look how bad this problem is in my town. Invariably, some nutter with a Simpsons emoji or like some junior former Guardian reporter will reply with a link to government study finds that, you know, mm -hmm. Muslim... It's one of the top hits if you Google it. Oh, it's a myth. Oh, actually, it's not true. You know, yeah. well, that's just like the most appalling and embarrassing thing. And, and a conservative-run Home Office that allowed this to be released is like shocking. So naturally, we look into that report in our in our in our investigation in our documentary um others have kind of analyzed it in the past but uh what others haven't done is actually try to take a better look at the ethnicity issue in in more fine detail um which i won't speak about now people have to watch the film to know about how bad that is and it really is horrifyingly bad um but why nobody in the government has ever had the minerals to show this statistical difference and to put it in clear terms is, I think, appalling. You know, the Royal Statistical Society does this coin flip test, right, that the majority of MPs don't know 
the odds on flipping a coin on it landing on heads twice. So that might be to blame for a small portion of that difference, but clearly uh, a failure to grasp to sit, uh, statistics is like less than maybe 2% of the reason why they're not doing this. The reason why is because the truth is too painful to bear. The reality is so horrifying that it like slays a thousand different sacred cows. And so it just has to be ignored. I mean, you have to pretend it hasn't happened.